Okay, uh, good morning everyone. <coughs> so today, uh, let me begin by reviewing what you did, what we did. <coughs> so, so far we learned uh, several classes of uh, plane partitions and we expressed the generating function for the plane partitions inside a box as a determinant and then we evaluated that determinant. And we also expressed the generating function for symmetric plane partitions as a determinant and <coughs> in the homework, as a, some problems in the homework, you f evaluated this determinant. And recently we expressed the generating function for the cyclically symmetric plane partitions and as a determinant we didn't evaluate the determinant. Uh, it's quite complicated, but it's possible. And we're not going to do that in class. Uh, but if you are interested, you can read the textbook. It is in explained in uh, chapter 6. <coughs> so these are all uh, expressible in terms of a single determinant. And today, uh, we are going to focus on another class of plane partitions. And for uh, symmetric plane partitions, uh, symmetric plane partitions are the plane partitions invariant under the trans transpose. So there are several operations on plane partitions, like transpose. And cyclical symmetric plane partitions are those invariant under uh, the rotation, 120 degree. And there is another operation called complementation. And we learned this uh, very early in this semester. And if you re remember, when we have a plane partition like this, and if this is, we, if you assume that this is inside a fixed uh, size box, then we can remove those in this plane partition. And you can think of the remaining parts over there, over here then this becomes another plane partition and this is called the complement of this plane partition. And there, uh, there, there are also uh, plane partitions invariant under complementation. So there are three main uh, or possible operations on plane partitions. Transpose, uh, rotation, and complementation. So SPP, cyclically symmet uh, symmetric plane partitions invariant, on, uh, invariant under transpose, uh, cyclically symmetric, invariant under rotation, and there are things uh, invariant under complementation. And what we are going to do today is, uh, the main object uh, today is the plane partitions invariant under all possible uh, operation, invariant under transposition, comple uh, complementation, rotation. It's called uh, TSSCPP, totally symmetric self-complementary plane partition. And because it's difficult to uh, draw this diagram, I'm going to just show you uh, with this PDF. So this is an example of a, a TSSCPP. So totally symmetric self-complementary plane partition means plane partition invariant under transpose rotation complementation. So it is invariant under any possible operation you can perform on this plane partition. Whatever you do here, it does not change. So this is symmetric. It contains all possible symmetry there. So that's why it's called totally symmetric, self-complementary. And so if you think of this as a, just a hex, uh, regular hexagon, then there are many operations, like uh, dihedral group uh, is is acting on this diagram. You can kind of rotate this um, 60 degree. Uh, you can flip over along this line. You can flip along this line. And it's always uh, invariant. And if you uh, think a little bit, you will see that you don't need uh, the whole picture here. Because there are so many symmetries only some part of this will be enough to create the whole picture. So I just drew uh, this uh, region, 
enclosed by this red uh, segment. You, you see, this red, uh, the area in, inside this red segment is, contains all the all information of this diagram. Because if you uh, rotate this, and if you flip this, you get this part. And then if you rotate this, you can recover the remaining parts. Do you see? So this is enough. So you, all you need to do is to focus on this line. Oh, by the way, uh, this uh, plane partition can be thought of as a tiling of this rec uh, hexagon using uh, you know, that, uh, what's called the Lozent or quadrilateral, which looks like this or this or this. There are three types of uh, this and this and this. There are three types of uh, past three types of uh, lozens like this lozens or this or this. You just uh, tile this entire region using uh, these three kinds of tiling. <coughs> okay, and then you can notice that these uh, lozens, colored uh, green, these are fixed because it is totally symmetric. Because it's, it should be invariant under this line, they must be uh, fixed. These tiles must be fixed. Also, these uh, purple lozens are fixed. Orange lozens are also fixed. All right. So uh, this can be uh, recorded as a, a non-intersecting lattice path, like this. So I just drew. Uh, so just look at this this region, and think of this as the uh, top floor and the next floor, and etc. Okay? And this, and if you, if you uh, draw with these pink segments, uh, the bottom of the top floor, then this becomes a, some kind of lattice path. And also here, it begins at this point and ends at some point uh, on this line. And also here and here. And this is just a single point. And if you uh, change the lines so that this is going to be at the x-axis and this line becomes y-axis, then if you draw that, this pink uh, lattice path uh, using this x-y coordinate, and this becomes uh, this line, uh, this intersect non-intersecting lattice path. All right? So for instance here, uh, east, north, east, north. So east, north, east, north. Here, east, north, north, east, north, north, etc. So this is a bijection. So the point here, uh, if we, if I name this uh, zero comma zero, and then th this one, you go to the west by two unit, and then you go to the north by one unit, one at a time, like that. Okay. And this line is of line y equals one minus x. So the uh, yeah. Any question about this correspondence? So, mm. okay. Uh, I just fix this, the second point here, to be zero. I'm gonna fix that this is going to be the origin. And why is this? Minus two comma one because here uh, this is x axis, right? This is x. So how can you go from here to here? You go one step up like this, and two steps to the to the left like that. So it's like y increased by one, x increased by two. Okay y increased by 1, x in decreased by 2. So we go one step up and two steps to the left. That's why I put those dots like this. Okay? No. So these, you notice that the starting points are fixed, like 0, 0, this one's 2, minus 1, and uh, 2, 1, uh, minus 2, 1, like, etc. So the starting points are fixed, but the problem here is that the ending points can be any points. 
on this line, y equals 1 minus x. If the starting points are fixed, the ending points are fixed, then this is exactly the problem that we know. Uh, Gessel Vienna, you can apply Gessel Vienna uh, lemma, and then you can interpret this as a single determinant right away if those ending points are also fixed. So here is the, what, let's look at this. So TSCPP is in one to one correspondence with non intersecting lattice path whose starting points are fixed, but ending points are not fixed. They can be uh, any point on this line. So we cannot really express this as a single determinant right now. We need to do something else. But the thing is, it is possible. Uh, we need to do extra work. That's what we are going to do today. That's our goal. Our goal is to express this as a determinant, like we did for plane partitions, cyclically symmetric plane partition, uh, symmetric plane partition. Is the goal clear? Any question before I proceed? Okay, I'm gonna, you're gonna see this diagram again, but for now. All right, so let's see. So we need to introduce some notation, or defini some definition. So definition, a perfect match, matching, a perfect matching of 2n. This means the set of integers 1 up to 2n. A perfect matching of uh, integers 1 up to 2n is a way of partitioning this set into n blocks of size 2. So this is basically a partition of this into blocks of size 2. And I'm going to denote the set of perfect matchings by n sub m sub 2n, set of set of all perfect matchings of 2n. So, for instance, m sub 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We need to partition this into two. Uh, it's the blocks of size 2, so we can either do that like this, or this, or this. Of course, I just express the partition as a diagram like this. This, this is the partition. Uh, this. Okay. So there are three. Uh, perfect matchings of four. <clears throat> and for, if you have this kind of diagram, arc diagram, it is very natural to define uh, the following definition. For a uh, perfect matching, a crossing of pi is a crossing like this. Two arcs cross each other. Is a pair of two blocks. I'm going to simply write blocks like this, I, I, J, K, L. So I'm going to sometimes write this or simply 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. So th this means a block. Such that, of course, we, when I write uh, as, a, as an ordered pair like this, I'm going to always assume that the first one is smaller than the second one. Such that I less than k less than j less than l. 
So in other words, as a arc diagram, so these are arranged in that way. So I, K, J, L, and I, J are connected because it's a block. K, L are connected. So crossing means something like that. This uh, came from two arcs. Question? It's clear? Yeah. If you think about this diagram, this kind of natural uh, definition. <coughs> and number of crossings will be denoted by CR of pi. Number of crossings of pi. So for instance here, what is the number of crossings of this perfect matching? Zero. Number of crossings, one. Number of crossings, zero. Like that. Uh, it is actually a very well-known object and uh, fact. Oh, fact. Number of perfect matchings is 2n minus 1 double factorial, which is the product of odd integers. And second, number of non-crossing matchings, perfect matchings. Non-crossing means things like this. No crossing. Non-crossing elements in the perfect matching equals the Catalan number. A well-known fact. We are not going to use this, but they are well-known, so it's worth knowing this. We will uh, prove this as homework problems. Right? And so for a uh, determinant, we know how to exp expand this determinant using permutations, right? Now, uh, there is something, some kind of similar quantity defined on uh, some kind of matrix, some, some special matrices. So let me define that thing. So let's say A is IJ. So this is uh, 2n by 2n matrix. 2n by 2n. And Yeah, you can define this for any arbitrary matrix, 2n by 2n, but mostly we will be considering what's called the Q symmetric. But let me define this first. The Fafian, Fafian of A is defined by this formula. Summation over all uh, perfect matchings, minus 1 number of crossings, For all uh, block inside this perfect matching, there are n, of course, we multiply a i j. Okay? This is the definition of the Fafian. Okay? So, by the way, uh, Fafian is named after. Uh, Mathematician called Faf, and he was the te he was the teacher of Gauss. So he was also famous mathematician. So for for example, uh, if we have a four by four matrix, then what is uh, what we know M four? Uh, one two three four like this. One two three four this. One, two, three, four. There are four, uh, three perfect matchings. What is the Fafian of A? So for this, what is the number of crossings? Zero. So we have plus sign. And for each arc, we multiply A 
uh, 1, 2, i, j. So a, i, j, uh, no, a, 1, 2, a, 3, 4. For, for this part, for this arc, uh, this perfect matching, for this perfect matching, the number of crossings is minus, is, is 1, so the sign is minus. And 1, 3, and 2, 4. Okay? And for this, this plus. It's one, four, two, three. Okay? So Fafian is defined like that. And from this definition, you can notice that the Fafian doesn't really use all entries here. It only uses the upper triangular part of this matrix, right? So we only used a1, 2, a1, 3, a1, 4, a2, 3, a2, 4, a3, 4. We only use this upper triangular part of this matrix. It doesn't really matter what these entries are. We don't really care. At least this definition. So this, these are enough to compute this. A matrix is called a skewed symmetric matrix. Um, a doesn't necessarily uh, just two mm, n by two n for any 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 matrix n by n square matrix. Um, so A equals A i j i j one n. A is called a uh, skewed symmetric. If a i if a i j equals a j i, then it's symmetric. So, but we have minus sign over it for all i j. Okay. That means the matrix. If we have entry one here, then here the other part must be minus one. If this is like three, this must be minus three, etc. And diagonal entries. What are the diagonal entries then? The diagonal entries must be zeros because a11 equals minus a11 means a11 must be zero. So it looks like this. Diagonal entry are all zero, and this part are the negative of this part. So skew symmetric matrix are like that. <coughs> and there is a very interesting uh, theorem about the skew determinant of the skew symmetric matrix of a 2n by 2n matrix. If you compute the determinant of a skew symmetric 2, 2n by 2n skew symmetric matrix whose entries are integers, you will notice that they are all a square of some integer. That's quite an interesting thing. And there is a very nice theorem due to Cayley theorem. A so two n by two n skew symmetric matrix. Then the determinant of A is equal to the Fafian of A squared. Very uh, nice theorem. Uh, so, for instance, determinant of skew symmetric matrix of size 4, A1, 2, A1, 3, A1, 4, A2, 3, A2, 4, A3, 4, and this must be minus A1, 2, minus A1, 3, minus A1, 4, A2, 3, A2, 4, if you compute the determinant of this, then you will dis discover that this must this is equal to this is the Fafian that we computed, right? Minus a one three a two four plus a one four a two three squared. The Fafian we just computed here. Determinant is equal to the square of the Fafian. So if these are all integers, then 
this is a square of some some integer. <coughs> Proof is a homework problem. We will use this to interpret uh, the number of TSSCPP. Okay. Uh, all right. So now let's look at the diagram TSSCPP again. Oh, by the way, uh, we want to use that fact. That's Q symmetric matrix determinant equals Fafian squared. Um, but for Fafian, we, that that theorem, Kelly's theorem, is only true when uh, the size is even, 2n by 2n. So we want to have somehow even number of lattice paths. But if the size here is, actually this is always 2n by 2n a 2n by 2n by 2n box. If this is a totally symmetric, self-complementary, the size must be an even size, 2n, 2n, 2n. Otherwise, there is no TSSCPP. So suppose that there are 2n, uh, the size is 2n, 2n, 2n. Then how many lattice paths are there? So in this case, n equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the same as uh, the number of floors in this region. That's, that means we have, including this dot, we have n path, right? So 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If n is even, then we have even number of path. But if n is odd, we have odd number of path, right? We want to have e even number of path. So we have slight problem here, but we can kind of avoid this problem by uh, ignoring this first path, which is just a single dot, if necessary. If n is even, we will just have this path, including this dot. But if n is odd, we will simply ignore this dot, so that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, even number of paths. Okay? Because we just want to have even number of paths. All right? So, that's okay. let me write down what I just said. If we have a TSSCPP inside 2n by 2n by 2n box, Corresponding non intersecting lattice path. Have n path. So we want uh, even number of paths. We want n to be even. So define this is just a technical thing, n prime to be n or n minus one, n if n is even, if n is odd. Okay? N prime is always even. If n is odd, we uh, delete or uh, ignore the first path. That is a dot. Dot, the single dot, with, as we saw. Okay. So, what are the starting points now? Oh yeah, let me. 
Okay, I'm going to draw this diagram again. So it's, I'm just drawing uh, the lattice path I showed you. So um, we have this. This is line uh, y equals 1 minus x. The points here are, this is 0, 0,0. Uh, minus, uh, no, minus, 2, minus 1. Uh, minus 2, 1. Minus 4, 2. Minus 6, 3. Okay? So for instance, like this, n equals even, n is an even int uh, odd integer, we will e ignore this. But if n is even, we will include that as well. So the starting point, um, so then, then we have, uh, okay. So now we have how many paths? n prime path. So n prime path means a s n prime tuple of path, like this. Start, what are, the starting points. So they are, they are all they all look like uh, two minus two minus i uh, i minus one. Uh, okay. I think I need more space. Okay. Let me write this over here. Starting points are two minus two i i minus one, where i is from 1 to n minus 1. So when i equals 1, it's 0, 0, and it goes like this. If n is odd. But when n is even, we also include this point. So 2 minus the same thing, but i uh, is from 0 to n minus 1. If n even. But the ending points are on this line. And ending points are on the line y equals 1 minus x. Okay? We're going to denote this by uh, Tn. Tn equals a set of n prime path. Whose uh, starting and points are as described like this. Okay. Here we include all such paths, not necessarily uh, non-intersecting ones. Okay. Anything like only starting points and ending points are fixed, so it can be anything like. These they can intersect like that, anything like that. But among them, we will we want to only count non-intersecting ones uh, at the end. Okay. So, uh, what is the number of TSSCPP? Number of TSSCPP. Of 2n, 2n, 2n. This is equal to number of non-intersecting, non-intersecting path, n path, n prime path in Tn. Okay, this is what this is what we know by the correspondence between TSSCPP and non-intersecting lattice path. But in Tn, there are more path, intersecting ones. Right? And as I said, if the ending points are also fixed, then we can write this as a determinant immediately. But we can't because the ending points are varying. So we need to do something else. This is the setting, by the way. 
And the trick here is that instead of considering only uh, lattice path, we give some more structure and ma make this bigger and then work on this bigger uh, object. So the trick is to introduce more structure there. Okay? So let for for an n path L L1. So n path is a uh, two tuple n prime tuple of path and n, n prime path. And we will also consider uh, perfect matching. n prime is always an uh, even number, so we can consider a perfect matching there. Okay. We're going to define the following quantity in LP. Not only we consider not only the path, but also uh, given perfect matching. This is the number of pairs i j or number of, number of arcs inside this uh, perfect matching, such that uh, the ending point of l i and Lj are reversed. Yeah, I'm going to show you an example in a moment. But let me define. So for instance, as a diagram, if I is here, I th so this is the i th uh, point from, from this. So we go like this. And J is somewhere here. When I, whenever I write i comma j inside the perfect matching, we, it is assumed that i is less than j. So it's j. Jth point. And uh, ij is an inversion, or, yeah, in, inversion for this pair. If this is uh, li, right, they kind of go backward. The, the ending points are, in, in, in like, reversed. If this happens, and this i and j is in a, if i and j are in the same same block, then we say that i j is an inversion, and in l comma pi is the number of inversion, such inversions. Okay. And one more notation or two, one more. We are going to define certain weight on this pair L and pi as follows. It is zero if the ending point Li equals Lj for some, for some Ij. If, some, if two paths are ending at the same point, then we will always define this to be zero. The pi doesn't matter. Otherwise, if they have all distinct ending points, and this is going to be in minus 1 to the inversion, L pi. Otherwise, otherwise. And finally, I'm going to define the weight of this uh, n prime path to be the sum over all perfect matchings, minus 1 number of crossings, and on the weight L comma pi. This is the setting that we are going to use. <coughs> By the way, uh, it's going to be a little uh, this argument is going to be quite long, so you have to be prepared. <laughs> so please try to understand this definition uh, correctly. I'm going to show you an example right now, right now, by the way. Because if you don't really uh, understand this, then you will be just lost today. <laughs> okay, so let's see an example. 
n equals 4. So we have uh, four points like this, this, So this is the line y equals 1 minus x. And because n, n is even already, uh, we, don't, we don't remove this point. So it's 0, 0, is uh, 2, comma minus 1. This is minus 2, comma 1. This is minus 4, comma 2. All right? So this is an n path, n prime path. But we also have a matching. So you can, you should uh, think of this as we have kind of more structured uh, path and also matching. So let's say we have matching like this. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is L1. This is path L1, L2, L2, L3, L4, like that. And we have a matching like this, so pi. So we have L and pi together. L here and pi kind of matches two uh, paths together. Okay? And we define the weight on the pair L comma pi. So if pi equals say one, two, three, four, oh. like this, what is the inversion of L pi? according to this definition. What is the inversion? Hmm? One? Do you see? It's one? Yes, it's one. Because you just compare L1 and L2, right? L1 and L2. Their uh, ending points are in the natural order, right? So it doesn't count as an inversion. What about 3, 4? 3, 4, their ending points are kind of reversed. So this is counted as an inversion, right? So this is 1. Uh, let's say if, let's say pi prime is 1, 3. So there are th uh, f three, three uh, perfect matchings. So what is inversion in this case? L, you compare L1 and L3, L1 and L3. So, um, so now um, we have like this, pi prime. L1, L3, their ending points are not reversed. Uh, and L2, L4, their ending points are not reversed, so it's going to be 0. Okay? And finally, if pi double prime equals 1, 2, 3, 4, like this, the inversion of L pi prime, double prime. So now um, we have like L1, L4, L2, L3. So we compare L1 and L4. Their ending points are in the original order. L2, L3, not reversed, so zero again. So you can compute the inversions like that. You look at each arc in your uh, perfect matching and then see if the ending point corresponding to these two arcs, uh, uh, these two uh, po starting points of, of the arc, reversed. And if it's reversed, then that is counted as an inversion. Otherwise, it's not an inversion. All right, then, then what is L of, okay, what is w, uh, w of L? What is the weight of this path? So, it is the sum of this for all uh, matching, perfect matching, right? So it is uh, minus 1 crossing of pi in L pi plus minus 1 crossing pi prime in L pi prime plus 
minus 1 crossing pi double prime in L pi double prime like that, right? What is that? What is the number of crossings on of this uh, perfect matching? Zero. So it's plus inversion is oh I think I should have minus right minus one minus one minus one raised to this because their ending points are all distinct so it's not zero so minus one is it zero this is one so it's the first one is minus one what is the second one what's the number of crossings of this one so it's minus inversion zero so it's minus one Finally, uh, no crossing, no inversions is plus one. So uh, it is minus one. You compute all of this. So the weight of a given n, n prime path is defined like that. Any question? Is it clear? The definitions? Hmm? Yeah. Ask, please uh, ask me questions if something is not clear. Okay? All right, so our goal is to show that the weight sum of this lattice path is equal to the number of non-intersecting lattice path. That's our uh, main lemma. It's a lemma number of non-intersecting n prime path in Tm equals sum of uh, this. This is our lemma. All right, so how can we prove this? Proof. So we, we will prove the following things. So it's basically sign reversing involutions. By the way, uh, in this form, it looks like just only we are considering only lattice path, but in the definition of W, we also have perfect matching. So it's not just for o sum over lattice path, but it's sum over pair of lattice path and perfect matching. So you should think of this as uh, L pi pair and minus one crossing of pi W of L pi, right? So it's sum over this pair, lattice path perfect matching. And we are going to introduce, and this is always plus or minus one or zero if the ending points are, the sum ending points are the same. We will introduce a kind of a sign reversing involutions on this set. So it is sufficient to show that. First, we will show two things. Uh, when, whenever we have a non-intersecting n, n prime path, it's going to be one. If L is non-intersecting, and second, sum over all L intersecting L equals zero. We will sum over all intersecting and prime path inside Tn. Oh, by the way, uh, yesterday I uploaded the lecture notes. So if you print out, printed out the lecture notes, then there was a typo. I, I just ignore. I, I just didn't write, write this in the previous lecture note, but I corrected it today. So if you printed that out yesterday, then you have some typo there. 
it is enough to show these two things because then the contribution of non-intersecting L for each non-intersecting we have one we add one and for non-intersecting path they all cancel each other and zero so this is equal to the number of non-intersecting path okay so it is enough to show these two things that's what we are going to do all right uh, first first one is easier uh, by definition Crossing of pi. This, but what is this? Think about the definition of this. It is zero if L has some two paths whose ending points are the same, but we don't have that thing because they are non-intersecting. And it is minus one to the number of inversions. But what is the number of inversions for this? They are non-intersecting. That means they are some kind of parallel like this. They, their ending points will never be reversed. So it's, it's going to be always 1. Right? It's always 1. That means, you know, you can just write this. Right? But this, if you recall the definition of the Fafian, you know, just we are multiplying one always, right? This means this is equal to the Fafian of uh, the skew symmetric matrix consisting of ones only in the upper triangular matrix, upper triangular part, and minus one. This is just definition, right? Because we, for definition of Fafian, you sum over all uh, matchings, and then you multiply a i j. But a i j is always one. That means we only have this sign. This is it. And this turns out to be one always. And this is homework. Not not very difficult. So we can do this. So we are done by the homework problem. Any question? So the first part. Is okay. Second part is the difficult thing. Okay, let's see how we can do that. Second part. I'm going to move on to the next page and begin there. So, second, we need to show this. So, let me rewrite this. L equals zero uh, sum over all intersecting L in T. Proof. Uh, okay, so let's, let, let's consider one path, one such path. We have n prime uh, path, the uh, intersecting n prime path uh, in Tn. Okay. Uh, if because uh, the path are intersecting, we can find two paths which are intersecting, like like this, right? But you know, we can uh, make this distance to be smallest, and in fact, make this distance just by one. If there is another uh, path starting between these, this will intersect with either this or this. So we can assume that the inter we can always take uh, intersecting path Li and Li plus one. We can always find, we can find Li, Li plus one intersecting. And I, we, we are, because there can be many such i, and we will take the smallest i, i is the smallest. We will just give a way to fix uh, two intersecting paths. 
All right. Okay. Uh, they may intersect at the end, in the ending point. If what happens if end of L i equals end of L i plus one, then it is already zero. So we can kind of ignore this. So assume that and different end. Actually, at the beginning, we can just consider all paths that never intersect at the end because they will contribute zero. They, they don't, we can kind of ignore them. OK, now uh, we consider, we, we now have one uh, intersecting end prime path. We will consider, a, because it's a sum, it, 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 W is of L is also a sum over all, prime, uh, all perfect matchings. We will consider perfect matching together. And for uh, consider a fix, or cons uh, one perfect matching. Okay. So we have this basically. We will kind of construct another pair of an end path end prime path and perfect matching in the following way, so that they have uh, the opposite sign. OK, how do we define this? Define L prime to be the end prime path obtained from L. We can ex we're going to exchange the tails of L i f i plus one by uh, exchanging the tails of L i and L i plus one. So in other words, so L i if L i is like this and L j is like this. Uh, I plus one. Then this will become L I prime, L I plus one prime goes like this. We just exchange the tail. So let's say this is the last uh, intersection point, last intersection. They may intersect uh, several times. Not only this, we will change pi together. And pi prime is defined quite the same. To be the same, uh, to be the uh, perfect matching, perfect matching obtained from pi by exchanging i and i plus one. So if i and i plus one are in the same block, then pi equals pi prime in that case. Otherwise, it will be change it slightly. Then the claim is that they have the opposite sign. In other words, minus 1 crossing of pi plus inversion L pi equals minus minus 1 crossing of pi prime plus inv L prime pi prime. By the way, this is an invo this is an involution, right? If you have if you apply the same thing on this pair, you will get this back, because you will find L prime, uh, L i prime and L i plus one prime again, and then you change the swap the tails, you get back this. Also, pi prime becomes pi. This is an involution. So if we show that they have the opposite sign, then this is done. If you can prove this claim, then the Second point, uh, item is proved. Question? But before I show you the proof, I am going to give you uh, an example. How we define L prime pi prime. And from this example, you can see, I can kind of guess the proof. Okay.
All right, uh, example. So this is uh, L1, L2, L3, L4. So we have this intersecting uh, path. And let's say that pi is this, L1, uh, pi is this, connecting 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. What is the corresponding pair L and L prime and pi prime? Okay, you find what is i in this case? Li, Li plus 1 intersecting, i is 3, right? L3, L4 are intersecting. So there, uh, the, rim, the other path are the same. So it's here. And like this. But for L, uh, L3, it goes like this. We change the tails like this. L4, like this. L, so L1 prime, L2 prime, they're the same. L3 prime, L4 prime. What is pi prime? You change 3 and 4, but they are in the same block, so pi prime is the same as pi. Alright? So what, let's see if we really have that. So what is the crossing of pi and compare these two? They are equal because pi equals pi prime. What about inversion? Uh, L pi. What is inversion L pi? For this, you, you look at this L1, L2. They are in the natural order. Okay? They are reversed. So it's, it's 1. Inversion is 1. What is the inversion of L prime, pi prime? Hmm? So you look at the same, same pi prime. I said pi prime is the same as pi. They are in the same order. Here, the, because we swapped the tails, they are in the same order, right? So it's now 0. So minus 1 crossing pi. We really have this, right? It's minus. Pi prime, L prime, pi prime. If I, I plus 1 are in the same block, uh, crossings are the same, of course, because they are the same, but uh, inversion number is changed by 1. That changes the sign, the total sign. And another one, let's see another example. Uh, the same thing with, now let me change this pi a little bit. I'm going to use the same diagram. So now, but pi is this, 1, connecting 1 and 4, 2 and 3. What is pi prime now? 1 was connected to 4, now it's going to be connected to 3, because 4 and the role of 4 and 3 will be changing, so it's like this, right? What is uh, crossing of pi here? 0. What is the crossing of pi prime? 1. What is the inversion L pi? You know, you, ca you look at these two. They are, their ending points are not changing, not reversed, 0. What is the inversion of L prime, pi prime? Still, they don't change, so zero. They are the same, but this differ by one, so we also have this. The same thing holds. Okay? So in any situation, we will always have this kind of thing. 
the sine total sign will be always uh, reversed. So we need to show that. Let's do that. So let me rewrite the claim again. If you do define pi prime and L prime that way, then crossing plus in minus as I showed you in two examples, we will consider two cases. Proof. Case one. Uh, I, I plus one are in the same uh, same block. Then what? Pi prime is the same as pi. Of course, the uh, crossing number will be the same. What about in L pi and in L prime pi prime? They will be uh, d4 by 1. Why? So how, how, do, how did we define this? You look at all arcs in, inside this matching, and then you see if these two paths are intersecting or not. But pi's are the same. Pi equals pi prime. So for every arc except i, i plus 1, oh, it's i, i plus 1, they will be the, if they are crossed, if the ending points are reversed on one side, it will be the same on the other side. So it doesn't change, but only this part will be changing, right? So it will be plus or minus one. So they differ by one. Is it okay? Because we only look at it every every arc, for every arc except i i plus one, they are the same. But for i the arc i i plus one, it will be changing. So it is plus or minus one. Okay. That's, I'm going to erase that part. So this one's uh, simple. Case two, uh, uh, not an arc inside pi. Then pi and pi plus prime are different. What is? So let's compare crossing of pi and pi prime. Because pi and pi primes are now different, this may be changing. And there are several situations, but let's just consider one thing. So i, i plus 1, I like this. Suppose that in pi, uh, it is connected like, like this. We are only looking at the arcs incident to i and i plus 1. What is pi prime? Whatever was connected to i plus 1 is now connected to i. So when you have a, a crossing, then it will be, the crossing will be resolved. So no crossing. If there is a crossing, it will be gone. If there is no, then we will create one crossing. So it is always plus or minus one. In other situations, you can see it's the same. Because we kind of change two things. It's always plus or minus one. So the uh, crossing changes. Okay. And what about this? Inf L pi, inf L prime pi prime. We want this to be the same. And it is true. And why? Let's see why. Uh, let me draw some diagram. So i, ith position, ith starting point, i plus first starting point. Uh, suppose that we have something like this. Like that. So this is connected to A, then I say this is connected to B. In L pi. In L pi. In one one side, L pi. Oh, and because uh, we ha also have a perfect matching attached to this starting point, and let's just, for, in for simplicity, assume that it is connected to K okay, somewhere here. And this is connected to L somewhere here, inside pi. OK? What, ha what happens in L prime, pi prime? Mm. 
i, i plus 1, somewhere here k, somewhere here l, b, a, right? So this is l, i. l, i is now goes like this. Uh, l, i plus, l, i plus 1 prime goes like that. Okay? And what about the pi prime? Now this is connected to this. This is connected to this. Okay? This is how we define. So for this, so for every arc, not uh, for any L, uh, any path, not incident to uh, one of these four things, they don't change. For for this, uh, so for instance, let's the I L. For instance, this. If we had something like this say B and this is say C, but this is changed, but what, what happens is these ending points are the same, L doesn't change, but what happens is only I changes to I plus 1. Okay? But here, we are, comp we are comparing L uh, path and I plus first path. So whether they are crossed or not, it will remain the same. I, I mean, whether the ending points are reversed or not, it will be the same. Because we only change this just one, one step. Because, you know, these and these are they are close enough so that they don't change. The fact that the ending points are reversed or not doesn't change. So the inversions are the same. All right? This is it. This is it, basically. This proves the claim, and we just constructed a sign reversing involution on not, uh, intersecting things, and they all cancel out, and what remains are the inter non-intersecting ones, and for each non-intersecting one, we add one number one, so the, it, the sum of the weight eventually becomes the number of non-intersecting paths, and this uh, completes the proof of the, of the lemma. Okay? Okay, that's the proof of this lemma, and I'm gonna we're gonna take a 10-minute break. <laughs>